All right, now to help us understand as to what all of this, of course, means, we are joined in by Professor Tarun Sorodip, who is the director at the Raman Research Institute and also the former spokesperson of LIGO India. Professor, thank you very much indeed for joining us here in Vyond. Now, the question that I want to ask you is this. How big is the LIGO India gravitational wave detector, which is being built in the state of Maharashtra? The LIGO India observatory is a four kilometer uh, laser interferometer. So it's four kilometers on each side in our L shaped. Uh, it's the same size as the LIGO detectors uh, in the US, which first detected the gravitational waves. And this is being built on 174 hectares of land uh, in the Hingole district of Maharashtra. All right. And also, Professor, please try help us understand, you know, as to what these gravitational waves are, you know, whose presence was in fact predicted by Albert Einstein. So, as uh, was mentioned, the uh, way gravity man uh, gravitation uh, manifests itself is through curvature of space caused by masses. So the fact that we see the Earth moving in a circular orbit is essentially Earth moving in a straight line but on a curved space-time. Mm -hmm. Now, Einstein immediately after proposing this uh, posed the question of what happens when the space-time fabric is perturbed by masses moving at enormous speeds, enormous masses moving at enormous speeds and uh, came to the conclusion that there would be ripples that would be sent out from such an event. Uh, and these are gravitational waves. The way you observe them is uh, if a gravitational wave, wave passes through, it stretches space uh, and uh, space in, and in two orthogonal directions. It stretches and squeezes space alternately. So as a gravitational wave uh, passes by, I would be stretched in height, then next stretched in width, and back again. So that is the way it manifests itself. Uh, the way we detect that is to check how it changes the distance between mirrors placed four kilometers away from each other. All right, very interesting. And also, uh, Professor, this this is you know something that a lot, a lot of people don't understand. You know these very you know advanced concepts of physics and in terms of the curvature of space and time. Now, the question that I want to ask you is this. What kind of scientific discoveries are expected from this cutting-edge observatory? So, we have already started detecting uh, very, very energetic events in the universe. So, black holes merging together produce enormous amount of energies. These are the most energetic events in the universe. We have seen neutron stars, Mm -hmm. uh, which are solid objects made of uh, nuclear matter, which collide into each other, and they also produce fireworks, which astronomers can follow up on. Mm -hmm. So what we hope to do is to observe the universe in a new, through a new medium, new right. messenger. Uh, we have been seeing the universe through light, and gravitational wave uh, gives you information which we can't get in light. Right. You know, the light that comes from these events is shrouded by a lot of matter that is surrounding that event, whereas these ones give you the pure dynamics that is uh, operating at the heart of these astrophysical phenomena. All right. So we have been seeing merger of events, but there are many other sources that are expected. We, in fact, uh, hope to soon start detecting a continuous, uh, I mean, a background of many events which are not, we are unable to resolve as the sensitivity of the detectors go up. And we may often, you know, be surprised by new things that we have not even anticipated. And that's that's the whole fun of probing right. beyond what our current capability is. Absolutely, indeed, Professor. And also, you know, it's it's difficult for a common man to, in fact, understand as to what this observatory does. But try help us understand as to how this would be advantages for India and indeed the scientific community. Is this just scientific research for? A research purpose or is there some you know some everyday sort of a uh, you know uh, phenomena that this this could of course help improve for the people at large so what's very interesting about the LIGO detector it's the large scale apparatus, physics apparatus but built upon concepts that we use in day-to-day -day life you know we have laser light 
we have mirrors reflecting. So in fact, uh, every uh, student in the college uh, in physics does uh, do this experiment, but on a tabletop scale. And when you want to do it on the scales that uh, LIGO seeks to do it, and control uh, the all the what are called systematics, the uncertainties of you know various things. Uh, you need to really push on technological capabilities. So the laser is unique. It is extremely stable, uh, probably the most stable one. And then you have a mammoth uh, vacuum system through which the light goes because you can't have the light scattered through air molecules and spoil the experiment. You have extremely exquisite control systems with 100,000 channels. Of. So every aspect of uh, science and technology we see in various apparatuses are there, but they are at the cutting edge of what is currently feasible. So it's a four kilometer detector, uh -huh. which is the most uh, precise detector for measuring uh, distances. Absolutely. And another part is we also are detecting such small disturbances of the mirror mm -hmm. that we are in the quantum regime. And LIGO is harnessing that. And that has huge implications for our aspirations to tame quantum mechanics right. and use it for various applications. Absolutely, indeed. Professor Tarun Sorodeep, thank you very much indeed for joining us, taking time out and explaining to us the nitty gritties of this phenomenal observatory. We'll, of course, wait and wait uh, for the many discoveries that perhaps would be made on the basis of this uh, observatory that is presently being built in Maharashtra. Thank you very much indeed, Professor, for joining us here on Vyond. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.